talking about so something I thought about this morning when I was getting dressed is the fact that people will say that they want something they'll say you know I wanna people okay people will say they want something they want to accomplish something they want their life to change in a certain area but then what you find is when it gets difficult or complicated it doesn't even always have to be difficult it can just be inconvenient it can be inconvenient and then people will be like no nah, i'm good that that requires too much that requires too much sacrifice that requires too much retraining of the mind that requires too much readjusting I'm good. I'm not doing it. I'm not, you know, and they and then they won't say things like I'm not doing that. What they'll say is, "Oh, I'm terrible. Oh, I mess things up." Because there's something about when we punish ourselves verbally, we our mind thinks that that is the consequence. So, I'm a, I'm going to say that again. When people give up on themselves or are unwilling to be inconvenienced or are unwilling to retrain their mind or unwilling to sacrifice, instead of sitting down and understanding why, many people will say, oh, I'm always quitting. Oh, I'm a procrastinator. Like they will have negative self-talk. They will move into negative self-talk versus retraining or readjusting the mind. So what this does is this acts as a consequence and a person can continue on going about this negative behavior or this behavior that doesn't suit them. Or, you know, and, and not change a thing. So if you hear a person over years or months or weeks, this could possibly be a red flag and help many of y'all in relationships too, myself included. But if you hear a person say, oh, I, I'm always messing stuff up. I'm, I'm a terrible person. I'm going to fix it. But then you keep hearing them say, oh, uh, 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 and nothing ever changes. That's the consequence. That's the punishment. Once that negative self-talk has beat them up enough or beat you up enough, because this might be speaking to you, the behavior never changes. And so people will often say, you know, People will often say, I want a different lifestyle. I want a different job. I want a different body. I want, and I'm going to be vulnerable for a second. I stay saying I want abs and stay eating cookies. <laughs> like, really, bro? Do you really? Do you really want abs? And so I have to constantly catch that. And so people will say they want something different. I want different relationships. And then as soon as it gets uncomfortable, check out. Like people don't like to be uncomfortable. And we use the word hard to describe discomfort. It's not hard all the time. I mean, there are some very challenging situations and lives and backgrounds and pasts and childhoods. However... A lot of things that we label hard in our mind and in, in our life is really just uncomfortable because it's different. Like something that's different is uncomfortable. Like I have to, recently I had to shift a lot of my schedule. So I kept trying to figure out a way to adjust to the schedule to where it was beneficial. It was very uncomfortable, very, because I was so used to a certain schedule. So I shifted and I'm still getting adjusted to it. However, I could have just checked out, held on to what I knew, which was comfortable, which had many benefits, but it also didn't allow for much change and much newness. Now, many times we hold on, and that's another thing, many times we hold on to something that's comfortable and it's not necessarily bad. Like, you know, it sounds like I'm saying that when we don't want to change, we don't want to change from something terrible to something great. Sometimes what we're holding on to is okay. You know, like you might have a good job or your business might be doing okay. And, you know, you're like, well, I don't want to mess up a good thing, a good thing. So I'm not going to ruffle no feathers. Any of that sound familiar? I don't want to ruffle no feathers. I don't want, you know, why would I mess this up? 
for something that might not work. I didn't heard that from so many people. And what that is, let's break that down. I don't want to switch from being comfortable to uncomfortable because what if I let go of something comfortable to be uncomfortable and then it doesn't work. So fear, fear of discomfort, fear of failure. And so it might not work. I'm not even going to lie to you. You might fall flat on your damn face. <laughs> but what if it does? What if it allows you to have everything that you desire? Or what if it just allows you to know that you can take a risk? Many successful people are successful because they're willing to take a risk. Like, everything not going to work. Everything that I've done has not worked. Some stuff, a good bit of stuff. So what you see on the outside with the business flourishing is the stuff that worked. Y'all forgot about the stuff that didn't work. And I didn't, because some of that stuff I put a lot of time into. But learning how, then I have to learn, okay, how to not do those big risks without more background and research. So I, I also have to readjust there. And so many times we say we want something. But like this morning, I was really tired. And it wasn't that I stayed up late. I woke up really early. I was really, really tired, right? And I could have easily said, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to work today. I, I control my schedule. I could have said, I'm not working today. I'm going to stay in bed today. I'm going to sleep, watch my movie, eat cookies. You know, I love a, I love a good fresh baked cookie. However, that is not what I plan to do today. And I'm planning on, you know, going on vacation. Like that, that does not get me closer to my goal today. I have people waiting for their taxes. Yeah, people are still out in Texas, um, which is good, you know, year-round money. I got people waiting for their taxes. I didn't give them deadlines. I could have easily pushed it back. I have the marketing team is waiting for pieces of information from me. I have people that write in telling me how my lives and my podcast help change their lives and change their thinking. Now, I could stay in bed, and it wouldn't be a big quit. It wouldn't be a big letdown. But it would be a small step towards constantly not doing what I set out to do. So although it would have been way more comfortable than getting up, eyes feeling heavy, about to drink some tea and all of this other stuff in order to move on with my day. And I might not work 12 hours today. I might do six. Um, however, when I got up and I said, nope, I'm going to work because that's what I committed to do today. And I'm going to put as much productivity and energy up to it as I possibly can until my body say, girl, bye, bye. Now that can happen too. But what that does to the mind is when I feel tired, I do not quit. When I feel uncomfortable, I do not quit. When I feel like things aren't going the way I wanted them to, I do not quit. You constantly train your mind with the little things. You don't train them when you become a millionaire. That's not how you train your mind. That's why people who hit the lottery lottery go broke if they don't have a financial advisor and a mentor. You train your mind with the little things. I used to do this. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to drop the mic. I might kick the table over. When I used to, I used to jog. I stopped jogging, not because I wanted to. I had some back in injuries and specialists told me, you could keep jogging if you want to. You are severely damaging your back. And I was like, damn. Picked up weight instantly. It was just, you're just hating on a girl. But anyway, anyway, I used to jog, not because it felt good. I told you I had injuries to my back. It used to hurt. I used to jog because of what it did to my mind. And I used to do a lot of things in the beginning before business became more comfortable to train my mind. And people don't understand how things that you do along the way help to train your mind. So I used to jog in cold weather. I used to jog in the rain. I used to jog up hills. And the entire time, I used to say to myself, go further. Keep pushing run faster. Every day we run faster. Every day we run further. I used to do that because when I was speaking on stages or when I speak on stages, because it's something that still works, I don't get winded. 
I don't feel like I don't have enough energy. And whenever I get tired, that voice that was trained in my mind when I was jogging says, we can go further. You can go faster. You can do it better. Stop trying to quit. We don't quit. So when I trained my mind when I was jogging, before this was years ago, before business, before people knew my name, before people like now, you know, somebody said, oh, you know, you know, that's, oh, I know that. This, girl. this was when it was like, who? I was jogging. I was changing my diet. I was figuring out how to stay up and work when I had to take care of the baby. Those are things that trained my mind. And those were times when I didn't quit and nobody would have known the wiser that I quit. But I had something that I wanted to accomplish. And that behavior still sticks with me to date. When I'm tired, I can literally afford to not work today. But I bet you I'm still going to work. And that's the difference between successful people and people that wish they were successful their entire life. So, I think I've done enough. Uh, 